the most realistic online racing sim ever made. This is iRacing. Detailed laser scan tracks, fully dynamic real world cars, and over 50 series to choose from. Six online world championships offering over $100,000 in annual prizes. This is the original eSport racing game. This is iRacing. Welcome race fans back to PTR TV for coverage of a special event here tonight. It is the Thorson Classic 60 here at the Eldora Speedway and it is going to be a special fundraiser event for Tanner Thorson, a sprint car driver as well as a NASCAR Gander Outdoors Truck Series driver who was involved in a very bad highway accident in California and these guys are racing tonight in the honor and in the pride of uh, helping him with some, raise some money in his recovery efforts to get himself back 100% and back onto the track. So a good night of action in, uh, for a good cause. And, of course, it's going to be fun giving you the calls here tonight. It's going to be myself, Corey Silva, and Evan Black here tonight at Eldora in the booth for PTR TV. And, well, Evan, uh, the 360 Sprint cars, I mean, we're used to watching the 305s come around this racetrack, and um, they do it as fast as they do, but a little bit more horsepower here tonight. I'm sure that's going to turn the racing action up just that little bit more. Yeah, these 360s here around Eldora, it's going to be a lot of fun here to watch tonight, and uh, I expect to see a ton of multi-lane racing. You know, this track, it's always fun for me to go up, run the cushion, run the high line, but also there's going to be some slide jobs, some people running down on that inside line. It's going to be a lot of fun to watch here tonight. Yeah, the dynamic track at iRacing, as we know, uh, definitely changes things up in how they are, uh, how the racing does progress over the course of the evening, so we will watch out for that. We have about, uh, I'd say, a good four, 35 to 40 drivers here, so there will be a lot of heats going on, and these guys will have to work their way into the feature. Uh, last I was uh, informed, I think it's 26 guys going to the feature, so we will be sending them home, and I think it's four people per heat will transfer, and then we will have a B-Main to uh, sift the field out into what will be a 60-lap finale here tonight. So again, I want to thank everyone for tuning in again for the Tanner Classic 60 here, and 
if you are interested in uh, helping the fundraiser efforts to uh, help Tanner out in his recovery. There is a link in the YouTube description. Uh, Thomas Barth is the organizer of this event, and um, any questions can be also sent to him as uh, he will make sure the money gets into the right hands. But uh, again, what better way to uh, raise money than a race? And well, we got to get it underway right now because they are lining up on the grid right now for heat race number one. So let's let you know who is in it and where they are going to be starting. Oh, looks like on the heat race number one grid, James Grace is going to be up front. Brian Cannon in second. Corey Pritchett in third. Tyler Haar, Alex Trotman, Tyler Martin, Thomas Berth himself, and Ryman Castle. Looks like we have eight drivers uh, as of right now on the starting lineup for heat number one. Ten laps are going to be going around this raceway. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see what line is going to be preferred here on this short ten lap dash here. And I'm sure all the guys in those next, uh, looks like we're going to have five heats here tonight. And all the drivers in heat two through five are going to be watching this heat, trying to learn what they can on where to run. Yeah, and just, I mean, as we look around this Eldora Speedway right now, you can see where the rubber, well, where the uh, the wear, rather, has been put in. And in all honesty, it's rather minimal, Evan. It does look like there's even some loose stuff at the top of the track. So uh, it looks like the bottom is probably going to be where you want to be because the grip is going to be there. But, you know, with these... Uh, Pretty decently powered vehicles. Uh, the rubber, well, the, I keep saying rubber. I'm an asphalt this is guy. This an asphalt, Corey. Yes, the wear, the the moisture coming out of the track. It's going to move these guys up the track, and uh, I'm assuming by the feature we're going to have those classic Eldora sliders. Yeah, I agree with you on that. Probably for the first two heats here or so, we're going to see most guys down on the inside lane, but maybe by heat three or four, we might see some guys start to move up the track. I don't know if we'll be to the wall before the feature, but uh, we'll kind of have to see and see how this track does end up wearing out but looks like we should be getting rolling here in a second yeah i think there was one driver who uh did not grid and that's uh kind of causing a little bit of an extended hold on the grid and what well, pace truck has uh decided to wait no longer it heads out of the pit road and into corner number one here at eldora and of course the world famous eldora i mean if you're not really a dirt guy uh, you're maybe just more of an oval racer. I mean, everybody knows Eldora. Of course, the Camping World Trucks made their uh, debut here back in, um, what was it, about 2015, I believe, 2014, something like that. I think it was 2013. Lines. Oh, see, even earlier than that. So Eldora, owned by Tony Stewart, has really taken this track to the next level and uh, bringing more important races here, or re re renovating it and just bringing it to a, a top-tier track as we do have uh, one more pace lap, and we will get these sprint cars underway here tonight. James Gray is going to be rolling off on that inside lane. He's going to have Brian Cannon on his outside. Corey Pritchett in third and Tyler Haar in fourth. Come down the back stretch here. Get ready to go into three and four and get it underway. Indeed, that is what's going to be happening right now. The 269 of Grace is going to be the control vehicle on the inside. Is he going to go early in the zone? Is he going to go to the last possible second? We'll see what his decision is going to be as the pace truck is in. Looks like he's going to wait a little bit. Now he's going to punch the throttle. Green flag in the air. He gets that 2-3 uh, car length lead. Looks like uh, Cannon in second is going to clear for that spot. Pritchett actually sliding through a second as we oh, got Carmen right behind him, the six, I believe that is. Yep, that's Alex, Alex Trotman. 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 Trotman has a nice 360 spin, and he's going to carry on, but uh, he's going to be going to the B main because he's all the way back there unless something happens. But up front is Grace holding that gap. You can see right on that bottom of the track. Some guys run in the middle, Evan, but most guys right around the bottom as we do have side-by-side -side for about the fifth spot right now. Remember, the fourth spot is going to be the transfer spot. This guy is racing hard to get that fourth spot. Currently the 35 of Tyler Haar has it. Tyler Martin in that 02 wants it. And actually that 35, he's pulling away a little bit over this 02. 35 of uh, Haar running that top lane, getting a little bit tight up there. Going to be able to pull away, it looks like, though. Yeah, that's uh, going to be a tough call. You have to get that... 02 into fourth spot if you want to avoid the B main, but as you said, Evan, that 35 of Hara seems to uh, just be running a little bit prettier of a wheel, a little bit higher on the track. That's allowing him to keep that momentum built up a little bit more, so maybe the bottom of the track where that 35, uh, that 02 rather, is running is not ideal, but I am looking up front, and I did think for a moment I saw that 24 closing in on the 269, but I think that may have just been a bad lap by Grace because he is, uh, again, out by about half a second over Pritchett. 
As we are on four to go. Top five getting all kind of spread out here. 35 still holding on strong to that transfer spot there in fourth. Got a few tenths over the 0-2 of Tyler Martin. Yeah. Still seeing a lot of different lines out here. Some guys sticking to the bottom, a few like the 35 right in the top still. Tyler Hart is really committed to that upper lane. Yes, he is, and you can see the deceit from uh, the distant camera here, especially in three and four, not so much in one and two, actually, for that matter, in one and two, all that loose stuff being kicked up because the guys haven't run high enough to dust it off, and you know that's not going to stay that way over the course of the night, but we are on the white flag lap for heat race number one. Grace has dominated it without really any form of contestment from Pritchett, so he's going to head into three and four, and he's going to be uh, just getting in that loose stuff just for the fun of it, and the flashlights will go off, and we have the checkered flag for Grace. Looks like Grace, Pritchett, Cannon, and Har all going to transfer to the A main here. Everyone else is going to have to go to the B. Well, and I, I said flashlights. I meant to say flash bulbs. I mean, I mean, I guess suppose people could have had their flashlight on their camera, but I wouldn't suppose that to be the case. But we digress as we are getting ready for heat race number two here tonight. Heat race number two starting lineup in front of us right now. It's going to be Anthony Lopresto leading them down. Evan Barola in second. Brian Coons in third. Jason Zeeb in fourth. Kevin Fry. Nick Nichols. Mario Lapinta and uh, Seth Brubaker in eighth. Again, we had no prior warning of uh, who the drivers were going to be in this, so again, if we botch some names, just kind of roll with us on that. We're doing the best we can, but Again, uh, Evan, another 10 laps, and obviously the heats are going to, that track state's going to carry over from session to session, so we saw him dusting off the top just a little bit, but again, I just expect that to be uh, more and more prominent as these laps tick off. Yeah, I think for this heat, we'll still see most of the guys running down the bottom making their time, but I think next heat, or maybe heat four, we will see some guys getting up pretty close to that wall, as we already saw a few try to venture up there in heat one, but... The bottom and middle lane were still better. Yes, they were. So we'll uh, we'll have to keep an eye on that and how uh, how these guys do choose to run and where the momentum does uh, become most prominent as the race does go on. And heat number two, another ten laps right in front of us now. And see, the sun has entirely gone down here at Eldor. We are completely in the nighttime conditions track will be as cool as it'll get lights are in full blast right now as the pace truck comes off four and we'll see when the 157 gets this race underway there he goes and he'll get the jump that we expected over barola and look at that battle for second as that was our uh, brian coons throwing it on in there coons just about had it clear but barola taking it back now clear for the second position 49 but a contact there with the 21 of yeah, that's uh, Barola who lost Barola all those spots. and Fry. Fry just kind of sent it in there and had a bit of contact there, but the 21 Barola is still hanging on to that fourth place transfer spot. Yeah, Barola was going for the lead, and all of a sudden that's taken away from him, so now he's going to be settling back in the fourth spot. Lopresto took advantage of all that. He's pulled away by nearly a second, and you can see Flipper he's... Is running. He's dusting off the uh, dusting off the cushion light up there, so yeah, someone's got to do it, I suppose. He will be the one to do it. He has the lead. He can kind of afford to... Uh, uh, run a couple slow laps and he'll still have quite the buffer over Coons and then Fry in third and right now Barola in fourth. Barola he did lose those spots but Lapinta in fifth is uh, behind him by about a second and he actually has a battle from Nick Nichols so does look like having that Barola is pretty safe that top four without uh, any kind of incident it seems to be pretty straightforward sending to the feature. Yeah as long as Barola does not make a mistake here he should be good to transfer in and still seeing a lot of different lines up there. If you guys run the top, if you guys run the bottom. I think in one and two, I think the top's going to come in a bit quicker as we already see the top four all run in that upper lane through one and two. But three and four, usually it takes a little bit longer for the top to come in as we see the leader in top two run in the bottom, but third and fourth are still trying to dust off that top. Yeah, like I said, it is, if you're in this position where you don't really have anything to lose in terms of your position, well, oh, why not? You're going to need it later on in the race. Why not just uh, kind of start the work a little bit early, if you will? But those guys back there still going for it. It's a three-way battle at the uh, the tail end right now, the fifth, sixth, and seventh. That's Lapinta, Brubaker, and Nichols, and some contact. Brubaker and Nichols had some contact there through one and two. Nichols losing a spot, falling back to seventh. Brubaker up to sixth. 
it's still a little bit behind Lapinta. Yeah, so Lapinta, now he's, with all that uh, carnage going on, he's lost even another quarter of a second to what he had on Barola. So now he's back 1.2 seconds. He's going to need something to happen, and well, only one more lap to make that happen as the white flag is in the air. And right at the top of the track is Lapresto. He had a, a, almost a second lead. Now it's down to half a second, but I think part of that is uh, on his own accord running that line. But again, checkers out, and Lapresto will take the heat. Coons, Fry, and Barola going to the feature. Everyone else can be going to the B main here a little bit later on tonight. And now time for Heat 3. Yep, Heat race number 3 is in front of us right now. We've already sent 8 drivers through. Now we got to send some more. So what is the lineup for this heat? It's going to be Jimmy Marr is on the front row. Kyle Moonen in second. Cade Laudy in third. William Wolf, Glenn Jameson, Jason Lineweaver, Cody Terry, Mikkel Johnson, and... Seth Busby, nine drivers in heat race number three. You see those flashlight slash bulbs going off in the crowd, and I, I gotta say, that is probably one of the, the coolest things I think I racing. Just added that recently to the service, one of the coolest things they've added. Definitely. And now we have flashlights. <laughs> I mean, they could, maybe someone's lost, maybe they dropped something, maybe they turned their cell phone around. It, it could be, you never know. But um, again, for the uh, people who are just joining us here tonight, this is the, the Tanner Thorson, or the Thorson Classic 60, as it's titled, an event to uh, help raise money for Tanner Thorson, again, a driver who very, com very uh, competitive and very quick in the USAC National Midget Series, won a lot of races in a championship, is kind of testing his waters out in the, the truck series as it is now, uh, has uh, a best finish of 14th last year in 11 races in 2018, and after his uh, bad accident that he was involved in, any uh, funds that were uh, willingly to be donated to the family and to him to help him with his recovery efforts after multiple surgeries, and he is expected to get back to 100%, but not without the help of uh, a lot of medical work, and he is uh, doing well from what we have heard, so again, if you are interested in helping with that cause, there is a link in the description of this YouTube video, and Thomas Barth is the promoter of this race, and uh, he can answer any questions that you may have on, on that, but again, uh, we Godspeed to Tanner and his recovery. Hope to see him back on the track. And heard he may be watching, so if you are, hope you are enjoying the action. And uh, we, we definitely are here at PTR TV as uh, Pace Truck has turned the lights off. We're in turn number three, that McDonald's number 13 of Jimmy Mars. He's going to be the one to get heat race number three underway. Pace Truck is in. And let's get him going. Heat race number three. And Mars easily going to clear for the lead battle for a second right now with Loudy and Moonin. Loudy cleared him, but Moonin coming back on the high side, going to clear him, just barely going out into three and four. And looks like Loudy almost got him clear once again, but that upper lane is starting to come in as uh, he got the wall bit there, which that is not as high as you want to run and cross over here. Oh, yeah, that 26 with a big slider on in there, but uh. The 72 is going to go back, and well, they're going to swap. They're going to do a little bit of a dosey do here, swapping yet again into one and two. 26 is going to go forward. Is the uh, the 72 going to be able to cross over? He's not going to be able to. So now it looks like uh, it's going to be that 26 in second spot. 72 up top. It looks like there may be an opportunity for another crossover. Nope, 72. For the contact. Running around the wall there. That's where the momentum is. These guys right at the wall. These guys are just doing the do -si do for second spot, all while Jimmy Mars pulls out to nearly a second lead. And currently, Glenn Jamison holding on to that fourth and final spot. Yeah, we only, had, make it in. we only had five drivers, six drivers take the heat. One of them already out, William Wolf. So it's only Cody Terry who is uh, on the uh, outside looking in right now, as you said. I mean, Glenn Jamison holding on. So these guys having fun up front. Cody Terry, the only one on the short end of the stick right now. But these guys are battling right up against the fence. Jimmy Mars, Cade Loudy, Kyle Moon, and top three and uh we'll just see if loudy can go up there and try to steal this heat win uh, it does look like on the stopwatch he is a skosh faster but i don't know if a skosh is going to do it in three laps four laps rather yeah it's closing in just a little bit not likely gonna be enough actually getting to quite a bit there through the sensor of three and four we'll see as now three laps to go and you can see they're right up against that wall just the slightest of mistakes and Loudy will be right there with him. Six hundreds quicker last time by four. Loudy, and coming to two to go. 
Yeah, that's just where you're right on edge. You have that right rear right up here against the fence, and here he goes to the inside. The cushion's not there, so these guys got to be careful up there. It's not built up yet to save you from that wall contact, but we're going to be having a heat win battle going on here. White flag lap. Is Loudy going to send it in for a slider? Is Mars going to hold off on that top of the racetrack? We're coming off corner number two down the back straightaway for the final time in heat number three. Looks like we're just going to run right around the wall, stay in the order we are in right now. It's going to be Jimmy Mars with heat number three and make it into the a main it's going to be mars loudy moonin and jameson all making it in so cody terry the only driver going to the b main here as we get ready for heat four yes indeed and uh looks like we're gonna have eight drivers in this heat race so let's uh let you know who they are gonna be it is leading them off it is Eater Martins, uh, apologies if I get that wrong, Travis Oldfield in second, Dalton Collins in third, Matthew Ramsey, Christopher Olding, Jason Trenopol, uh in sixth, Ty Dahlman and Matt Brown, and I know for a fact I got Jason's name wrong, I apologize, um, I think the son's actually in chat right now, so... Perhaps you can let me know how to properly say that name, but again, eight drivers. We're going to take four of them to the feature, and uh, I think we have one more heat after this, potentially, maybe two, Evan? One more after this. One more, and then the B main, and then the 60-lap main event, which is uh, what we all came out for tonight at Eldora. And Evan, I'll see if I could pull up a picture for the fans at home. Um, I think I do have it somewhere on my uh, in the production rig right now, and... There is a rather large trophy actually going to the winner of this race, so there is something to fight for here tonight, other than just the pride that goes along with it. Yeah, what's better than winning a race than winning a race where you actually get a trophy for it? Yeah, you know, most of the time in these sim races, you don't get trophies for it, and especially one this nice. Yeah, I will get it on the screen at some point in the broadcast, but yeah, it's one thing to win uh, 5, 10, 20 bucks, as uh, sometimes is on offer, it's one thing to even win a championship, and uh, but it's one thing to literally have something to show off and say, hey, look what I did. So, I know I wouldn't have, even if I wasn't covering this race, Evan, you know I don't have the skill to get it, so it would not be going to me. I but, don't either. Yeah. I cannot drive a sprint car. Yeah, so it'll be going to one of these guys, and we'll find out who that is in probably about a half hour's time. So, again, you'll want to stay tuned as we are wrapping up. Well, we're not wrapping up. We're starting heat race number four right now, and it's going to be Eater Martins on the front row with Travis Oldfield. Pace truck's going to pull in, and here we go. He's going to get on the lot pedal as early as possible. Green flag in the air. Oldfield going to hang on a second. Top three, top four, top five, all going to stay exactly the same. Here we're out of turn two. Everyone's staying pretty civil for right now, but that 38 of Oldfield has a run on that four out of turn four. Go down into turns number one and two now, right up against that cushion. Out of turn two, pretty even for those top two. And we haven't actually had the opportunity to see a legitimate battle uh, carry itself out for a prolonged period. So uh, it'd be really cool to see if we can uh, see this heat battle going on. Martin's trying to hold on to it. Oldfield trying to take it. Uh, it does look like Collins and Ramsey have spread out. And behind that, it's only uh, Trenopal and Dahlman. Dahlman already in the pit. So it looks like it's only the 17, again, on the short end of the and stick right now. And swiped up for the lead. Oldfield going to clear Whoa! him, but the four going to have a crossover. Almost in the fence there with an inch is held him off there off the wall but the four is gonna be right up on the top of the track 38 right back down to the bottom he's not gonna be able to clear they're gonna be side by side he's gonna go for the full-blown slide jump there it is here comes the crossover yet again down the back straightaway oldfield making that same exact move two times in a row and got the exact same outcome but again trying to slide it through three and four and it might work here out of turn four yeah oldfield gonna get the lead now the four gonna try and send it down into turn number one and two gonna do so but not gonna clear and that was really close there to two. Yes, it was. And I think that it may be over for the time being now, as the, unless we can see uh, Oldfield get that time back. I don't know if he's going to be able to, but you know he's not going to give up four to go. These guys are just going for, remember, this is not so much for uh, the feature. It's just mainly to get yourself that little bit better starting position. You'll be one row further up if you get that extra position and uh does look like at the moment that martins is going to be the uh rather old field got it backwards here on my telemetry old field is going to be one that will hold on to it as we have two laps to go and i'm really liking what i'm seeing out of old field right now he's running a really good line through 
all the corners, one, two, three, and four, and just really steady on the wheel, not kind of sawing at her all over the place. So he's definitely been the most smooth uh, car out that I've seen so far. Yeah, but the, that is what you need to do, even though these cars don't have a little bit more power, they do have, uh, they, you do have to keep them straight and keep the momentum built up as the white flag in the air. We're already in turn three and four, taking the checkered flag. It's gonna be Oldfield getting the heat. Uh, Martins, Collins, and Ramsey will go to the feature. Looks like Jason Trinopol gonna be the only driver going to the B main from this race. And we're on to the final heat. Yes, we are. And we're going to bring it to you right now. Get you the starting lineup in just a moment. As these guys will line up for heat race number five here in tonight's activity. And let's see as uh, we give you the grid right now. It's going to be Derek Terry on the front row and Hunter Brady in second. Sean Grace, Kyle Garrett, your top four. Max Collar. Uh, Taylor Kennedy, Dylan Mirando, name we covered last night in the Synergy Dirt Racing Series, and Robert Stoltenberg will uh, be the final driver in the Heat 5 not lineup. And it looks like we only have four or five cars rolling out here. Actually, only four out on track right now, so it looks like everyone from this might advance. Yeah, and this, uh, I did promise I'd show it, so I did get an image of the trophy. That is the trophy on screen right now that these drivers are going for. Uh, I was told the 42 inch tall trophy going to the winner of this race. So definitely the pri definitely a prize worth uh, giving every last bit of effort for. And I know that is uh, exactly what we're going to see here tonight as uh, we're getting ready for the green flag. And as you said, Evan, four guys on the grid, four guys transfer. So go all out. You're in no matter what green flag is in the air. And actually the outside lane, Hunter Brady gonna get the lead there out of the restart and out of turn two. And the nine starting to fall back a little bit here, not quite able to keep it up down on the inside lane. Got really loose there, entering three and four. Out of turn four here, these drivers, it looks like, I don't know if the track's looking up or these guys are just struggling with it more because they're not able to keep it as steady as what the previous heat races. Yeah, and uh, Taylor Kennedy in the one, he is having uh, massive issues back there, but again, he is transferred in. He doesn't have to worry about it. So uh, as these guys up front, it's uh, Hunter Brady up by about half a second, Sean Grace in third, and ta uh, looks like Kennedy is going to pull it in the pits, and I hope he knows he is transferred. Remember, you don't have to... He doesn't have to do anything else except finish right where he was, so hopefully he does uh, keep it in for the feature event. We'll see what happens, but... Up front, uh, we had an interesting restart, but yeah, it looks like Cream has rose to the crop, Evan. That 10, uh, definitely the uh, the master of this heat race. Yeah, and as you can you can kind of see it a little bit, the track is starting to slicken off. These drivers are definitely having the toughest conditions out there so far of all the heat races. Right up there, uh, just under where the loose dirt is, you can really see it starting to slicken off there. So these drivers are going to have to start running even higher which uh, whenever they get rid of that high, it is really hard to keep it off the wall. It's hard to keep it off the wall, but on the other end, it's a lot easier to play defense because it's just harder to get that momentum on the bottom of the track. You, you can't use all the real estate that you need to use, and we see that in every, uh, every discipline of racing. When that top starts working, that bottom really uh, is kind of handicapped. But uh, Kyle Garrett in second, he's a second and a half back is the three, or somebody, who was that? Hit the one, the Taylor Kennedy. Yeah the one into the pit wall and well he's gonna stop that and now Derek Terry who I don't think I took the initial grid he's on the track two laps down now and he's actually being scored in the fourth position as we speak so yeah, I think Derek Terry had a bit of an issue with getting off the grid he couldn't get the car to fire up is what he said happened yeah, but either way, he uh, ran enough laps. The one has had a bad enough race that he's going to actually take that spot away from him as we do have one to go in that 10 machine uh, out by a massive two seconds over Garrett's going to take this heat race number five win in dominating fashion, Hunter Brady. Also transferring, transferring is going to be Kyle Garrett, uh, Sean Grace, and Derek Terry all going in to the A main. 
as the B main is now getting out there and getting ready to grid. Yes, they are, and this is the last opportunity to get yourself into that feature event. And it looks like, uh, well, 23 guys on the roster for it. I'm not sure how many drivers are actuality going to be in it. Top six are going to be going for the, uh, top six are going to go into the feature. All right, six drivers it is. So let's let you know where they are starting here in the cost consolation, the B main event here, which will uh, lead us up to our, our 60 lap feature in just a few moments. So it's going to be Tyler Martin leading them down, Mario Lapinta, Cody Terry, Jason Trenable, and uh, Taylor Kennedy, the top five. Alex Troutman, Seth Brubaker, William Wolf, Ty Dahlman, and Max Collar, the top 10. And the remaining results will flash by on the side of the screen for you. You can see where everyone is gritting up. And we do have uh, a slight difference. It's going to be 15 laps instead of 10. So just a little bit more time to uh, make those moves happen and uh, just try to make those setups. You don't have as much of a rush, but uh, five laps isn't that much more. So while you may have a couple more to play with, by all means, you can't take it that easy. Yeah, like you said, five laps at a half mile track is not very long at all. So, Mystic drivers are going to have to be going for it from lap one. Yeah, yeah. Lap have. one all the way to 15, they're going to be having to give it their all. Yeah, we're going about 15 seconds around this place. So, just do the do the basic math right there. It's, uh, what, a minute 15 seconds of extra racing. So, it doesn't really sound like that much more because it isn't, but it's still something. So, may take that to your opportunity. It may work to your dismay, depending on uh, how your circumstances play out. It does look like we have. Oh, 13, 14 cars on the grid. Remember, as Evan said, six of them are going to go. So we'll be watching that mid-pack spot very closely. And I'm sure it'll be rather exciting. But got to watch the guys up front, too. And again, see where the speed's going to be headed into the feature event. We already know where some of it is. But some guys will have clean racetrack. We'll see what they can do. And we'll find out together in a matter of moments as the pace truck does, uh, again, take that left into the pits yet again. And looks like Martin's going to get him going really early. And he has a massive jump over the field. And carnage. And, yeah, one car, two cars wrecking, three cars. That's Trotman around as well as a couple other drivers. But again, we're staying green, so we had to go back to the action. And it's uh, Tyler Martin held on to the lead through all that as he was ahead of all the carnage. Mario Lapinta in second, Brubaker in third. Nichols, Zeb, uh, Zeb rather, and Tallman. And just look at how spread out everybody is after that. Dalman hold on to that last transfer spot. And he's got a pretty good uh, gap back to Thomas Barth, who looks like he's having a few issues with that car. Dropping back a little bit further off of that final transfer spot of Dalman. Yeah, Barth, remember, is the, uh, the promoter behind the event. So, uh... I don't think he's going to be seeing himself into the feature. He may have some kind of problems with that machine as he's uh, rather off about two seconds off the pace right now. So I don't think he's going to be making it to the feature unless something happens. But we'll see if that does happen. You never know in the world the dirt racing stuff happens so quickly. But and up front, if you're Tyler Martin, you have two and a half seconds over second place. He It's almost over an entire straightaway. He was over a half second faster last time by then, second place will be the... Yeah, we'll pull up the uh, the lap graphic we do have, and you can just tell by lap times, uh, 14.968, a 15 flat, he just turned, we'll wait for uh, Lapinta to go past the line, get a, ha oh, uh, yeah, a half second faster, over a second, the next fastest on the track is actually the 7.51 of Nichols. And battle going on for a second. Brubaker getting by La Pinta. Now, who's that behind him? Nichols trying to follow through, getting by that 40. Yeah, with the slider. Turns number one and two. Yeah, we just, clear him. we just saw that Nichols is a fast car, so uh, time to take advantage of it. And just, I mean, you're not going to get to win without an incident to Martin as that gap's down four seconds. But uh, we'll see what kind of battle him and Brubaker are going to have. And Nichols and Brubaker, they're they were actually a bit quicker than Martin last time by, so they might be able to not they might not be able to get him in this race, but going into the future, they could be a bit better than him. As all three were really even last time by. Yeah, it was a 30, a 29, a 36, so all within a tenth of a second up front. And again, heading into the future, we're uh, 
Things will progress even more, things will change with the track, with even more drivers on track, and of course the stakes being that much higher. As I got confirmation, I thought it was a 42-inch trophy, just got told it was, it's nearly five feet, so um, yeah, another foot and a half added to the estimate. A humongous trophy on the line, again, for this fundraiser event for uh, Tanner Thorson, but we're coming to three laps to go. We need is now five seconds, and... I got, oh my god, right in front of the track! Someone just took out the third place car! That, that, was Cody that, Terry. Was. that was Cody Terry, was sideways in three and four, ended up taking out one of the drivers that was up front. On replay, he just got dead sideways in front of the field, and that was the, uh, the 751, and Nichols T-boned him, and he still is in fourth, and um, if I don't know if he has the, the meatball flag for repairs, if he's being forced to come in the pits, but uh, he is still in the transfer spot, but uh, interesting uh, turn of events there as the white flag is in the air for Martin. He's already in a turn number three, getting ready to take the checkers. And here he comes in a completely dominating fashion. By over five seconds, he'll take the win. And uh, Brubaker will take second. And we have Lapinta in third. Nichols in fourth. Zeeb. Jason Zeeb just now coming around in fifth, one lap off the pace, and then uh, Ty Dahlman will be the final to transfer into what the feature event is, and these guys getting lined up for it right now. So where are they going to start in the Tanner, in the, I keep saying Thorson the same. Classic. Yeah, like Thorson Classic 60. I will get the name right. Well, I have no choice. I just did. So the starting lineup will flash by on the screen. It's going to be James Grace leading it down to uh, Anthony Lopresto in second. Jimmy Mars in third. Travis Oldfield in fourth. Hunter Brady in fifth. Cody Pritchett in sixth. Brian Coons, Cade Loudy, Eater Martins, and Kyle Garrett. And uh, the remainder of the grid will flash by on the bottom. So having a dynamic that I'm sure uh, will change things. As remember, Cautions aren't on in the heat races, but they are on in the feature, so uh, we know these guys will uh, have to be on their game because uh, restarts, I'm sure, will be a lot more prominent in this event. Yeah, I would say so because we had quite a few issues in those heats that would have brought out cautions had they been turned on. So it's going to be interesting to see how that ends up playing out here and what happens on all these restarts as we are going to have 26 cars out here. So it's definitely going to be possible for us to have a few cautions. I mean, uh, I didn't. I forgot to mention earlier. I want to make sure I bring it up because it is an important thing for the event. Shoutouts on the bottom sponsors for the event: After Graphics, After Hours Racing, Flatline Laboratory, Specialty Fuel Logistics, Great Lakes Super Sprints, Crazy Squirrel Racing, Tony Lagarde from Backyard Raceway, Barth Racing Concepts, Froth and Steed Racing, and Cracked Lens Images. All sponsors, teams, organizations that help donate uh, funds to uh, Tanner Thorson and the cause for tonight. So I want to give them a shout out again. But here we are. The feature event is underway well it is becoming underway right now green flag is in the air here we go 60 laps at Eldora fields all stacked up entering turn one but the leader of James Grace is going to be able to hold on to the lead out of turn two two wide a bit of contact with the outside wall I'm not quite sure who that was but he wasn't third caution out now yeah, they were three, four wide in the field there, and uh, we got Nick Nichols upside down yeah, we just on saw, the back stretch. We just saw him and uh, have that issue in the B main, but he was fast. Look at they were just all wadded up there, and looks like he just got turned uh, in the middle of a little. Uh, I, don't, I don't even know what to call it. Just a wad of cars, and ended up putting him on his side, and well, it's not a good position to be in, in a sprint car because you can't really roll these things back over very easily. So. That was just about four cars trying to fit in the exact same spot. Yeah, and I mean, I, I'm not any Einstein, but I don't think physics get that allow that to happen very easily. Yeah, you're right on that. It doesn't happen very much. Yeah, so first caution underway, and again, we have, uh, it was a 26 car feature. We did have 26 drivers take the grid. Uh, unfortunately, in the case of the 751, his uh, feature event lasted all of half a lap but we'll see if uh i see everyone's single file right now i'm i'm pretty sure we'll get doubled up for this restart usually the first three restarts of a race will be doubled up and typically after that um organizations have been setting it to single file for uh 
all cautions that do occur after that and that is indeed the case we are getting doubled up stacked up and ready to try this again try our hands at another start see if we can get going and uh see what these guys are made of it's gonna be grace and lapresto on the front row evan all right get ready to come through turn number three and four here 269 of grace gonna be leading us back to the green here Getting ready for the pace truck to pull in. There it goes now. Waiting on Grace. When is he going to fire off? There he goes. He fires off and going to get a good restart there over Lopresto. Is there two wide, three wide right behind him? Maybe a four wide there back in the pack, but Grace is going to hold on to the lead and Lopresto is going to hold on a second out of turn two, entering three now. Every inch of this Eldora Raceway is absolutely covered in vehicles right now. Every lane being utilized and there's some contact. And again, cars upside down, bouncing down the front straightaway. Oh my goodness. Big carnage on the front stretch here. Kevin Fry was the car that went up in the air. Looks kind of like the, just kind of the same yeah, thing. About four cars going for the same space. Yeah, they were nearly five wide for a moment. There was some contact off of four, wadded everybody up, and uh, there was definitely Kevin Fry that went for the most uh, exotic flight, if you will. But he did end up getting back on all fours, and he's still going, so... And there are four faster players in this race, so even if he does have quite a bit of damage after that tumble, he's going to be able to get right back in it. Yep, you just get yourself in the pits. Hopefully you can. Um, you don't need the use of a tow truck. You can get driven to the pits by yourself under your own power, get that reset, get back into the show, and good chance you'll even stay on the lead lap if uh, the cards do play out right. But um, again, we uh, got those sponsors on the screen earlier. Again, all those uh, companies and organizations, I'll pull it back up. All of them have already, prior to the event, um, contributed funds to uh, to the to the, the end result of the night, which is to help Tanner Thorson in his uh, recovery of uh, in his recovery. What's the word I'm looking for right now? It is, it is recovery. I don't need a word after that for uh, the, inc the uh, incident he had and to get him back into the driver's seat. And he was uh, had a successful dirt career and uh, taken a stab in the truck series and had a pretty decent start to a racing form that is completely new to him. And hope to see him back on the track soon. So again, if you are interested in trying to help out the cause, uh, link in the description. Thomas Barth of, the, uh, of this event is the promoter and he'll... Uh, lead you in the right direction with the funds to help Tanner out, but we're going to get this race going yet again. Restart number two on the night. Grace is going to get him down yet again and green flag in the air, and I'll tell you, Lopresto was pretty pretty on top of that restart. Here he comes to look to the inside. Yeah, didn't time it well enough to stay next to him, but did hold on to second. Running the inside lane through one and two did not quite work out. They get contact behind him with the 24 and the 38 in the wall. It's going to keep it straight, but he did lose all that track position. And just look at the wad behind him, Evan. It's just a matter of time before something happens. These guys all over the place, top to bottom, three, four wide. I mean, how long can they really pull this off for? So far, so good. Couple laps in the book now under green. And top three all just kind of starting to pull away a little bit here. Pritchett, Presto, and Grace. Grace leading up there, and he's starting to pull away a little bit over Lopresto out of turn four now. And look at the lap times, and yeah, Grace was a little over a tenth quicker. So let's see if he can keep that up, and as this track wears out, if he can adapt his line. Yeah, he was the only driver in the uh, in the sixth tenth of a second bracket on that last lap. We'll see what it is this time by, and what role reversal with Lopresto actually faster. He was the only driver in the sixth tenth of a second bracket that time by, so kind of trading laps off at the front of the field and we'll see if indeed there is a change for position and uh, just kind of waiting I'm sure there's going to be more cautions well hopefully there's not you never know but things are starting to settle out just a little bit we do have that yellow machine on the inside and uh, I think that's Jimmy Mars oh it is not as uh, Brian Cannon rather in that 47 the yellow machine to the inside Jimmy Mars the 13 just in front of this side-by-side -side battle that's going on for about the seventh and eighth positions right now and it looks like they may be side-by-side -side a little bit further ahead of that and some contact made Better Martin's almost going to run caution up now not sure what that one was for I do want to go back and look at that contact it's like zero two Tyler Martin brought that yellow out see that little bit of contact right there that got the four sideways of Better Martin's good job to save that but Tyler Martin uh, as you said Evan on the back straightaway sideways. So let's uh, take a look at what happened with him. 
Okay, he's side by side here off a of two, and that's what you call just not giving enough room on the exit, and they both simultaneously pound the inside fence. Both drivers do manage to get it rolling. So both of those drivers will be able to stay in this race and we'll still have a shot at the victory here with a lot can happen still in over 40 laps. And top two still all the same as it has been all night with Grace and Lopresto. Yeah, it's just, it's just up front. I mean, it, it, if you get the restart, you get that jump, and obviously um, Grace has been getting it every time. It's just, it's really hard to, when you're so similarly paced, so hard to do anything with it that, I mean, Lopresto, he's going to need to time a restart really well or just hope that we can get a long run and see if he maybe has a little bit better pace than Grace does, but I'm not sure if that's going to happen. And we've seen Lopresto, every start and restart, he's timed it a little bit better. So we'll see if this time if you can time it even better or if Grace is going to change it up and just try something different. Maybe go a bit earlier, maybe go a bit later. Just do something different. You don't want to do the same thing every time. And if you do, eventually they're going to figure it out and get it timed. Exactly. you got to keep your keep the field on edge and just, I mean, you, said you do the same thing every time, eventually they're going to pick up on it, and it's going to bite you in the butt when you lose that advantage that you had, but we'll see what happens here. This should be the final double start of the event, so Pace, uh, Pace Truck, rather, is in, and again, Grace with that nice jump, and uh, Lopresto will take sole possession of second, and here they fan out behind him. Edder Martins was going for third there, but lost his momentum at a turn two, 24. Pritchett holding on to third. Currently, as they're side by side, four fourth right behind them. Now the 49 going to clear for that fourth position. Coons now taking a look to the outside, the 24 for third. Not quite going to be able to get there to his outside. Now entering turns number three and four, trying to get to his outside. Still not quite able to get there out of turn four. And caution behind him. Oh, yeah, more guys upside down. I see uh, things. Hunter see, Brady. Yeah, the 10 going over. And the 02 yet again. It's like that started with Brady and getting a little bit of contact from the 71 entering three. Yeah, you can see just the entire track, just cars flipping and just going wildly throughout. And again, we will uh, we'll try it again. And I think this one will be, um, if you may be able to confirm Evan on your end, but I'm pretty sure that we should be going single file and we know that we'll uh, spread these guys out and it may... Uh, I get the race on a little bit more with a green flag flare, but uh, that is to be determined as we are approaching the halfway point in the race. We're at lap number 24, and again, Grace from the pole. He dominated his heat. I think he led every single lap in his heat, and well, I guess going for the perfect night, if you will. Lead your entire heat, start of the pole, win the race, uh, but I mean, still more than half to go. Anything can happen, but it's looking pretty good for that 269. And it looks look, still looking like we are going to have double file restarts here. As the lights are out on the pace truck and same front row we've had all night. Grace and Lopresto, Pritchett in third and Coons in fourth now. As we enter turn three, waiting for the pace truck to pull down into pit road. Out of four now, waiting. And there it goes, now waiting for Grace to fire off. And a bit later than he has been, but he's, he's still got a really good jump over Lopresto, but... Presto did stay a bit closer than what he had been as they are fainting out behind him once again. And top three all staying the same. I thought I saw what was going to be a wreck that 47 was. And caution out now. Oh, well, there you go. Wasn't the wreck I was thinking of. 15, 15 of 15. Jason Zeeb. Wasn't the, I thought I saw a wreck forming, but the wreck wasn't what I saw. They they got it sorted, but we'll see what happened to the 15. He was right in the middle of the Hornets. I think he was in the wall. Go on board with him. I think he got into the wall and. Ended up yeah, it kind, of, it kind of looked like out of two, just the front end kind of picked up on him or something, because yeah, he, just got he kind of had it yawed out, and it just got, the front end just kind of came up, and he just went straight. Yeah, and then he hit the wall, and then when he hit the wall, he went, he just put her upside down, he got himself back on all fours, and again, with all the available backup cars that are in the event, should be able to get going, and Minus the track position loss, pretend like nothing's happened. So um, we'll try it one more time. 
And restarts are going to be on single file right now. So we'll hopefully clean things up a little bit and let's get a bit more spread out here. Yeah, we are on the fifth caution of the race, so uh, 14 of the 28 laps, half the event has been behind the pace truck. So um, we'll try this different restart strategy now. We'll get them single filed up right against the wall these guys will be. So we're not going to... Single filed up. Single filed up. There you go. We're not doubled up. We're single filed up. We're singled up. Oh, yeah, I guess we're singled up right up against the wall here. And uh, these drivers are just going to be trying to make sure that no one can get to their outside because that is the only legal place to pass before you do get to the start finish. So everyone should be right up against the wall as they enter turn three. Yep, so uh, we probably won't see the fanning out three, four wide like we have saw, but we'll, uh, I'm sure they will uh, get going in a matter of moments. Green flag is in the air. You can see everyone spread out throughout the field. Guys pulled out of line mid-pack, but Grace got that huge jump of about four car lengths. Presto running that high line through one and two. Gained a lot of time yeah. there. He's right on the back bumper entering turn, or out of turn four now. Gonna try and make a move, going to the top through one and two. I don't know about Grace running that inside lane. I don't like that, but it looks like it might work out. Yeah, here he comes to the inside. Lopresto with the mega dive. He's gonna go for the slider. He's gonna clear, but here comes the dosi do. Here's the crossover. Grace to the inside. Grace is gonna do it again. He's not gonna be able to clear. He has to leave the lane open. Oh, give the lead to Lopresto. And the 24 Pritchett gonna follow through to the outside at 269 out of turn four now. And Pritchett getting clear for second. Yeah, so the, the, the perfect game was no longer being pitched by Grace and uh, he's gonna be back to third and he's gonna have uh, just under half this race. Caution out now once again. Oh, Trying to see where that was at. My dramatic statement got interrupted. Mario but. Lapinta went up into the catchments through one and two. Looks like there was an issue with uh, Kevin Fry in front of him. That got a little bit late there. Let's try to focus on Kevin Fry. Okay, yeah, Fry was really slow in entering one, and then... Did and he run out of gas or something? Yeah, let's try to see if we can go on board and listen to that engine, because he was really, really slow. It doesn't really sound like it sputtered. It sounds like it just got off the gas. Yeah, well, they didn't. Well, she switched to the wrong car there, but yeah, he was inexplicably slow there in the center of the corner, and it stacked them all up yet again, and. Well, now we'll try it a little bit differently in 157 Lopresto. He's been in second trying to figure out how to get that jump. Well, now he has the jump because he's going to be the leader, but how good is Pritchett? How good is Grace going to be from that third spot? We saw Lopresto. He's not afraid to run that cushion. The cushion's not built up that tall yet, but it's there in primitive form. So uh, he had that right rear right up on it, got that charge off the corner, and Grace couldn't shut the door on him. He had to leave the door open and... 157 went right through it to the lead, and now Grace, first time really all night, he's been having to play catch up to any degree at all. So let's see what he can do now that he has a little bit of traffic to deal with as the pace truck is in yet again. And there goes Lopresto on the loud pedal. Look at that jump, he gets over second. Good jump at 157 as uh, looks like Grace trying to get back around that 24 for second, but not quite close enough. Now entering three and four. Grace actually under fire from Brian Coons and caution is the 49 almost went around there at a four. And the four wrecking after the caution. Edder Martins. Yeah, he's sideways on the front straightaway and again, uh, replay getting uh, a lot of usage here tonight. We'll see what happened to bring out, I think, the seventh caution. He just got Looks like turned. the other Sean Grace had some issues. Yeah, the four had uh, gotten to the back of somebody and then somehow ended up bringing him around, so. So I, I called it, Evan, in the pre-race for the feature. I said that these restarts were going to make the night, and I mean, ultimately, the only lead change we did have was under green, so I still think you're, even though we can't get these green flag runs going, obviously your ultimate speed does matter, but 
If you could, if you're purchasing, if you could stay with that 157, pull off a couple sliders, maybe get that crossover to end out in your favor. I think at this point, that's probably going to be the best shot you could get because we otherwise, uh, we're not getting more than three, four laps at a time. I do think with these single file restarts, it is going to be a bit harder for anyone to get around with Presto. Unless we get another, if we can get going five, ten laps, and maybe there'll be a chance for him to do so. Hopefully we can get this going green and trying to end this race under green as we've got about 22 to go right now. Yeah, it's going we'll to be all about just timing that restart for the 24. You can't jump it. You can't lay back too much, but there is a little bit you can do behind the driver's seat to try to get that restart. You know, he's uh, going through every checklist in the book trying to figure out what to do, but that 157, I mean, you can't beat that. That's the jump he gets. That's every single time. Three, four tenths, but the battle for second. Grace to the inside. Grace to the inside through one and two. Not quite able to clear him as Pritchett going to hang on to second, and now the battle for third with Brian oh, Coons and mid-contact behind the 21. Good save by him. Going to keep it straight. Yeah, that was contact going on, about fourth on back, but they are able to keep it right, at least for the time being. I'm not quite sure if it's going to stay that way, as they are completely scattered. They're trying to wreck, but they're going to keep it straight for the moment. Good save by all those guys back there. Yeah, Jimmy Mars, uh, Travis Oldfield. Oh, oh, the wreck happened at the tail end. They did a great job holding on to it, but the wreck was at the tail end. I think it's Kyle Garrett in the 71. Yeah, it looks like... Kevin Fry had some issues in front of him. Yeah, Fry got turned by the 45 of uh, Ramsey. Looks like Fry just got in the slick stuff and got it really sideways right in front of him. Ramsey really had nowhere to go right there. Yeah, so again, the, what are we on right now? The eighth caution of the event. 23 laps are... Uh, have been led by the pace truck and counting, so does the pace truck get a bonus point? I think the pace truck's going to lead the most laps, and we'll see if the pace truck can hold on for the win here. Hopefully uh, he doesn't, but we'll see how this ends up. About 15 to go right now. 16 right now. So just uh, basic mathematics, which, I mean, if you're a follower of PTR TV, you know, we don't usually do very well. I think we can probably have about three more restarts right now. Usually ca cautions are three, maybe four laps, depending on where it is. So I think we could probably have three cautions maximum and still get this race going. If they're insta-cautions, as we say, an insta-caution is a caution that essentially comes out within the first lap of a restart, but... Uh, anything more... Well, hopefully we don't find out. Hopefully we don't, but it's always better to plan for the worst and hope for the best so we'll uh take that mindset into it as it's going to be 14 to go and we're going to try this for a ninth time to get this race underway and uh green flag racing amongst us pace truck is in and lapresto really holding him back behind that pace truck this time by he's going to send him a little bit earlier and i think that actually worked out better for pritchett yeah, Pritchett got a pretty good restart there. Not quite able to pull underneath him entering one, but he definitely stayed closer than he did the last couple of times as James Gray is still trying to send it down there into three and four, but not close enough to really make a move. He needs to try and get, run the upper lane and get a better run, get closer. So he's still trying to run the top. Uh, and bottom look at one Pritchett two. run that top. He got off the way to the, bump, the back. He's going all the way to the top of the track, getting that momentum, trying to get that huge run off the straightaway. He got such a monster run off of two. I don't know if it was a bad lap for Lepresto or if that 24 has something to cook it up there. And we won't find out. Well, huh? Hopefully we can find out uh, a bit later. Yeah, I don't... I'm trying to look around. I see Zeeb in the pits. I, uh, I'm not sure if there was something going on with him prior to that. There's nothing really uh, overly uh, visible on the track of what happened, but... I believe it was... The caution was from Jason Zeeb trying to get on the pit road. Because right, so that is the only thing I saw from that. Yeah, but Evan, I saw it. One and two, he was... Uh, Pritchett was back about two car lengths. They were both running that top of the track. And he just got the turbo boost, them almost as if he was on the Mario Kart turbo pad. He gained so much time, got right to the back of Lepresto. I'm not sure if Lepresto ran a bad corner, 
or if uh, he's really going to have to watch out for that 24, but uh, hopefully, as you said, we can find out and it could be a very exciting finish to this race. Should get restarted with about eight to go. Yeah, probably can have one oh, yeah. more insta caution, I would say. Yeah, eight to go. If we have an insta caution, that'll give us three to go. So at that point, it's going to be over. So uh, we still can, at, at maximum, we can have one more restart, but uh, I think that's going to be the most of it but uh, again we don't want to see that i really want to see this 157 in the 24 and who knows maybe them getting at it will allow the 269 a grace remember he's uh he led the first half of the race till uh he's kind of opened the door on that uh mid segment that we had he's back to third he wants to get it back hasn't been able to do so yet but again cards may play out for him we'll have to find out together in eight laps time as the uh the pace truck takes its uh next turn into pit road again and here we go back green flag racing look at grace to the inside of pritchett pritchett did not get going at all there it's gonna let the 269 to get underneath him but not gonna be able to hold it as pritchett uses the high line to his advantage and they're wrecking behind him and one car up and over that's coming out the caution so should have one more restart here yeah i want to say uh I mean, yeah, that's kate loudy yeah it looks like that the 26. Oh, oh, a little bit late there. Let's just take it back about 10 more seconds. Try to see uh, what happened from the top. Okay, he went for a mega slider, got loose on exit, and just came down into traffic. And uh, some uh, contact sent him on his roof. And then the 45 kind of got clipped on the way by as well. So. And I'll tell you, Evan, Grace was really on that restart, but I just feel like the move he made to the inside wasn't... It wasn't really planned to work, if you know what I mean. It just didn't seem like sending it to the inside there, especially on a restart. You don't have that momentum built up to really take that slider in there deep and clear him. So he ended up losing that position back and almost lost a spot to the 49 behind him. Yeah, but I also with that, I don't really think he lost anything from it. Because I don't think if he stayed in line, he would have been able to get by uh, Pritchett anyway. So he yeah. tried it. He almost lost his spot to the 49 of Coons, but he managed to hang on a third. So no harm, no foul. And he's going to get to try it again here. And this should be the final restart here. So we're going to have about four to go once we get back under green. Yep, this uh, uh, essentially factually is the final restart of the night. So Lepresto just has to do it one more time and he will get this race uh, underway and maybe into victory circle, depending how it plays out. Let's find out together. Green flag in the air, very early in the zone. He goes for that restart well before the green flag gets a significant lead. He's gonna need every second of it because we know how good Pritchett is in the top. Presto holding on to about a two car length lead here out of turn number four, gonna take three to go. Pritchett closing in just a little bit. We'll see what he can do here down in turns number one and two. This is where Pritchett has been a lot better. And actually hanging pretty steady there. Not really gaining anything, but not losing anything either. Maybe closing in just a little bit through three and four. Going to take two to go. I don't know if he's going to be able to catch him. He's going to have to send it in there if he does. Yeah, I'm not even sure if he's in send it range right now. He needs to get a little bit Caution, closer. Caution, that's going to end it. And we will not find out what happened. Uh, let's see. Mario La Pinta. Mario Lapinto, let's go on replay and see uh, the race ending caution here tonight. Oh, looks like a little, uh, couple 360s there. Let's go back a little bit further and try to see what happened. Uh, 71 loose, 40 made contact. Lapinto makes worse contact. But that's going to be the race. We're going to come off of the final corner, and Anthony Lopresto held off the charges. He got the restarts that he needed to get, and Anthony Lopresto is going to win the trophy. He's going to win the Thorson Classic 60. And coming home in second is going to be Corey Pritchett in that number 24, and in third we have the 269 of James Grace, who he really had a good car early on and in his heats, but I think just as this track wore out, he did not quite have what he needed to go out there and win. Yeah, he didn't have that, and uh, he's lo he lost that opportunity on that one spot where he just gave up the top, and just, I mean, just there wasn't enough laps for him to uh, ultimately be able to do anything with it, so... He had to uh, suffice to that second, well, to that third spot it ended up being, but.
We will uh, go through the final running order here. I'm not sure, just given the nature of the session, if we're gonna be able to have interviews, but we'll uh, we'll see if we do, and hopefully allow uh, the winner to get in here if he is able to. But let's get let you know where they finished here tonight at Eldora and the Thorson Classic 60. Again, results from the feature event here tonight, the 60 lapper. It was 30 laps in, 30 laps led, 30 laps to Lepresto, 30 laps to Grace. Lepresto gets the trophy. Pritchett in second. Grace has to settle for the third. Brian Coons in fourth. Evan Barola in fifth. Jimmy Marr is in sixth. Dalton Collins in seventh. Edder Martins in eighth. Brian Cannon in ninth. And Kevin Fry rounding out your top ten. And coming home in P11, we have the 35 of Tyler Haar. In 12th, we have Sean Grace. 13th, we have Hunter Brady. 14th, we have Glenn Jamison. 15th, Travis Oldfield. And then Kyle Moonen, Matthew Ramsey, Ty Dahlman, Seth Baker, and Kyle Garrett running out the top 20. And then the rounding out your feature event is Mario Lapinta, Cade Laudy, Jason Zeeb, Tyler Martin, Derek Terry, and Nick Nichols rounding out the field and it does appear as though we do have a third place and first place available so uh, I think Evan has caught up with the third place finisher here tonight led 30 of the 60 laps uh, James Grace in the booth with us well James you had a really good run early on through qualifying and your heat race and first 30 of the laps of that race were great for you but it just kind of fell apart there towards the end and can you, can you kind of walk us through what happened there? Uh, you know, it, it was. The car was good at the start. Um, towards the end, it started to get a little bit looser than what I'm used to. I like my cars a lot tighter. Uh, I kept trying to move the wing back, and it would either go from way too loose or just overly tight. So I just found one that I could handle and just rode it out for the third place. So do you think the track changing, do you think it really changed the line that you had to run very much in the feature or was it always just kind of right up against the wall and you just kind of had to deal with that? It moved around a little bit. You had a, there's two different lines. I didn't find it because we didn't have long enough runs. Um, but I think, uh, I think it was up in the wall in one and two and down through the middle in three and four. And I just never had a chance to get there to try it out because you have to get your speed built up before you run that line. Yeah, and do you think if that stayed green there, do you think if those top two kind of started racing each other a little bit, do you think you would have had any chance to get a second or maybe a win out of this race? Uh, about the second to last caution, they got bunched up together pretty good, and I thought uh, the guy in second was going to give it a shot. So I did kind of just sit back a little bit, hoping that they would kind of bump into each other and give me an opening. So, yeah, but... Um, they did a good job keeping it clean, and it was a good race. All right. Well, is anyone you would like to thank here, Shadow Chef, for your third place finish in the Thorson Classic 60? Uh, you know, just shout out to my friends, my family that tuned in to watch, uh, and uh, you know, best of wishes to your buddy. I really hope he uh, heals up good. And uh, shout out to my team, High Side Racing, and uh, that's about it. All right. Thanks for talking with us, and once again, congrats on your third place finish. Thank you. And it looks like we do not have second place finisher Corey Pritchett. So Corey is going to talk to your winner here tonight, Anthony Lopresto. All right, Anthony, it was a, a calamity ridden race here at Eldora, but you held up front for the majority of it. But it took a really power move there to get by Grace on the outside to take the lead. And you held on after that. So just talk about the beginning of that race, trying to get by and ultimately that pass you made for the win. Yeah, absolutely, guys. Uh, it was a lot of fun there, um, doing the green flag laps that we did have, so that was cool. Um, yeah, I had some good racing there uh, with James, and was able to get by on the high side, um, sneak by on the high side of one and two there. Kind of kicking myself because I didn't want to qualify second and put myself in the position to uh, maybe ride shotgun most of the race, um, do the yellows and stuff, so I had to deal with that. Uh, but was able to get the lead and hold on to it, so we'll take it. You did exactly that, and then obviously uh, just the calamity that rode at the end of the race with all the cautions and all the restarts after restarts. Was there any worry about just uh, getting a bad restart, maybe not getting the jump you need, or it seemed like you nailed almost every single one? No, there wasn't really a big worry about it. I knew, um, you know, with as many yellows as we're having, that was kind of the name of the game, like you said, just nailing my restarts and managed to get a decent jump each time um, there for a little while, so I was able to bring it home. 
All right, so uh, obviously in the uh, the fundraiser event here tonight for Tanner Thorson raising the money, you take home the checkers and uh, the, uh, I gotta ask, you're gonna win nearly a five foot tall trophy. You got a place for that, man? <laughs> Uh, yeah, I do. I actually have a trophy case, uh, trophy room out in the garage. It's, uh, it's going to look nice in that. All right, man. So that'll be awesome to see. Congrats again on the win. I'm sure you got a couple shout outs you want to give. Yeah, man. I got a lot of people I want to thank. Um, first, I got to thank my sponsor, uh, Wicked Cushion. Um, check them out at uh, wait, uh, wickedcushion.com. Um, they just came on and sponsored uh, Casey Kane there with their Wicked Energy Gum um, for the entire World of Outlaw season there. Uh, the entire year, I should say, um, racing sprint cars for Casey Kane, so that's kind of cool. Um, I want to thank uh, Thomas and uh, the guys for uh, putting on this show for Tanner, um, obviously, you know. And our thoughts and prayers go out to Tanner and his family. Um, just hoping for a speedy recovery. You know, he's uh, one of the most exciting, uh, one of the more exciting guys to watch in the country. So definitely want to see him get back at it as uh, soon as possible. And uh, yeah, I want to thank uh, you guys too at Primetime Racing TV for uh, casting this deal. All right. Thanks, man. Uh, obviously, our sentiments go out there as well to Tanner, and congrats on the win. And again, uh, well, we'll hopefully we'll see you around soon. Thanks, guys. All right. So that is the post-race show, talking to Anthony Lepresto, the winner of tonight's race. I thought we were going to have uh, the promoter of the event in here, and uh, I don't have him in, but he may pop in in our outro. So again, want to thank everyone for tuning in to tonight's broadcast of PTR TV at Eldora for the Thorson Classic 60. I'm sure you've heard it a bunch of time, but important for the cause. If you are interested in helping out uh, Tanner Thorson in his recovery after his accident, getting him the medical assistance that he needs to get himself ready and back underway and back into the race cars, Again, the link is in the description of the video, and everything will uh, go to the uh, a good cause and get Tanner back behind the wheel where you know he wants to be. It was a good night of action. We saw Anthony Lopresto with that pass for the win and holding off on the, all those restarts, holding off a hard-charging Corey Pritchett there. And again, it was good to call, but we want to give a couple shout-outs on the PTR TV side of things before we say goodbye on the evening. Longtime sponsor with the channel Air Movement and Fabrications, uh, Crutes Custom Graphics, and uh, Brandon Subsidiary Company now of Fame Apparel. So, if any kind of custom designs for your cars, uh, T-shirts, uh, hero cards, uh, basically anything with a, anything graphic design, Brandon's your guy. Check him out on all forms of social media. So. Well, that's me, that's Corey Silva, that's Evan Black, this is the Thorson Classic 60, congrats to Anthony Lopresto, and uh, best wishes to Thorson on his recovery for the final time, so have a great night everyone, and we'll catch you next time. Have a good night, we'll see you next time. <laughs>